Hello everybody, it's me Phoenix Duckdoodle. Today we are going to be doing a basic overview tutorial on fist bones. I'm not going to go into depth because there are a lot of really good in-depth tutorials for fist bones. Um, I personally learned, blah, 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 blah. I learned fist bones on my own. Um, I learned it actually from converting my models. Um, Thankfully, there are easy ways for you guys to convert, which I will be going over in this video as well. But basically, what we're going to start off with is the basics that you need to have done. Make sure... Now, I personally like to do all of my toggles before fizz bones, because fizz bones does show a lot of issues such as clipping and such. So having all of your menus, all of your toggles and such out of the way does make things a little bit easier, because you're not starting fully from scratch. Um, especially when you run into those clipping issues. Um, so firstly, make sure that your FBX is configured into a humanoid. Um, what you'll do is you'll just go over here, animation type, you'll move it from generic to humanoid. You just press configure, it'll do its little thing. Make sure you add in your chest bone and please take away your jawbone. If you're like me and you have hair on your model, it's going to make your hair a jawbone. So I believe I haven't experimented with this. But, going off of assumption that it is a jawbone, I am presuming that it's going to make your hair move with your, uh, with your mouth. Um, but you don't need a jawbone because um, it does, uh, the Unity SDK does give you an amazing um, lip sync. So therefore you, you don't need one. And, um, yeah. So basically make sure you already have your um, model rigged. I usually do this step very last because I always like to test things. Sh fucking update on my software, I don't care. Anyways, um, I do tons of stuff. Tons. Um, like I do everything beforehand. Because I do run into clipping issues. Alright. So for this, make sure that you have the updated SDK. Make sure your gizmos aren't hidden either, like mine were. Um, ignore this blue circle throughout this entire tutorial, please. It's not important. It's not, okay? It is not important. It is a completely different tutorial that I might go over in the future once I get more experienced with it. Um, basically, for now, open up all of your main components. Just all of your main components. Um, this is just a... This is for contacts. Um, yeah, so when you had Pat and Boop, my avatar, she does cute stuff. Um, but yes. Um, and the model that you see here will not be sold, so please do not ask in my comment section, where's the model link? Um, because this is my personal model and she will be replacing this little red cutie you see here. Um, anyways, back to the tutorial. So for those of you who already have dynamic bone settings, um, have dynamic bones and fizz bones in the uh, SDK in the in the Unity project. Another thing that you're gonna want to have is make sure you have the newest updated SDK. I will continuously repeat this, but if you do not update, uh, not only do you not get all of the extreme amount of parameters, fucking 256 parameters that we have been lovely, amazingly gifted. And for those of you who don't know, floats do use like I think it was like four, five to eight. If I was, if I remember correctly, they use a lot. So, please, please, please update your SDK. Also, you won't get the auto conversion if you do not. Make sure you click on your model that you want to auto convert. Up where the F, uh, the SDK is, you can see the show control panel. Oh, wait, no, don't. Okay, open the <laughs> VRC SDK. I know you can't see this, so I'm kind of, actually, can you? I don't think you can. No, you can't. Okay. It's, it's right next to tools, you'll see it, and then, like, go down to utilities, and you'll see an option, convert dynamic bones to fizz bones. It does work. It won't kill your computer either, but just know, you're gonna have to fuck with the bones a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. It doesn't convert the exact things over. Um, even I'm still messing with my fizz bones, um, until I find a exact thing. Um... So, really quickly, I'm going to get her breast and her, uh, boobs. 
most people do it on these i personally don't i go into her hip i'll go add component to search up fizz you're gonna want to add a fizz bone now you'll see all these grab your what you want to move drag and drop it just like that I personally always have mine on simplified because I've noticed that there are a lot of issues with advanced. Um, let me move my little model over here so that way you guys can you guys are you guys can have these settings. I genuinely do not care because I may not keep these. Um, I personally like to play with my settings in play mode. Sorry, don't mind me. I'm just organizing my screens up a bit. By a bit, I mean a lot. Um, I have a massive monitor, so I use like half of my monitor for Unity. Okay, so we're gonna go back onto those hips. Shakira, Shakira. And then I personally, I like to click on my main model, but you can click on the bones. Um, you don't need to duplicate your model for this, by the way. So please don't, because then you're not gonna have it on your main model. That's another reason I suggest doing it after, because you can do it on a on broken model okay so you'll go up here press play and then you wait your computer crashes then we're gonna go all the way back here we're gonna go right here and then we're just gonna So I personally, for the um, butt bones, I usually don't mess around with much. Um, sometimes I will move the spring up a little bit. And as you can see, the spring just makes it a little bouncier. Um, pull basically is it pulls it back to its main state faster, from what I understand. Like, see, I just moved it uh, down and it doesn't move back as fast. So it's more of a jiggly, jiggly booty. So what you're going to want to do after you figure out what you want, add a collision. Please add a collision if you do find interest in colliders, but there are automatic colliders in the game already. Um, I personally still add them just as a, like, in case I'm on, uh, like, I don't have my contacts on. I'm still able to fuck around with my contacts while other people can't. Um, for butt bones, I usually go 001, because that usually gets the beyond panda's ass. Um, I do edit panda bear's face kind of heavily, so I do always end up with some clipping. Like, as you can see, what I meant by you will find clipping is... You do find clipping. It's not super bad, though. That's actually- these are, like, the best dynamic bone settings I've ever had. <laughs> so what you're gonna want to do, once you're happy with those, Copy your component, please get out of play mode, or else everything you do is not going to save. And then you're going to paste those component values. And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to minimize this one. Add another fizz bone. Open that second one. Paste, con the, paste the values and grab your ass cheek wiggle right. Um, a lot of bones will have other ones, but in Blender you can just auto weight paint everything to fix the bones again. So that way you don't have like three different ones. So that's some some of them have root bones. Um, I always have an issue with the root bones deleting, even though they're white painted. So be aware of that. Um, but if you have a root bone, just use the root bone. Just just use the root bone. <laughs> Ow. No. I'm just gonna keep going through this and kind of explaining more of my process as I get comfortable really quick. Quickity do. There's not a way that I could pause this, is there? There isn't. Okay, that's kind of that's kind of stupid because I kind of need to like I kind of need to like take off my jacket. That's okay. Anyways, we will just continue to suffer. So for this, um, so you don't have to always drag in the root transform, but I like to, especially if you are working on things like the hip and the chest. 
because as you can see, I'll go into here and it will select every single bone. I am going to copy and paste those settings that I was using for the butts. I will be using those down here as well. I just will. It's a straight guesstimation game, by the way, on how big you want these. Um, after so long, you just learn kind of a guesstimation on things. Um, yeah, I'd say that's good. Okay, so since uh, mm, I'll get into that actually a little bit later because I don't think it's going to be very effective on this little chain here. Um, something that will help is if you go into 2D mode, you can zoom in a lot farther on something. Um, on chains, I usually pull the spring up a lot and I just leave that alone. So, the limits, I can get, I'll be getting more in depth in this later, because this is more so useful on hair. But say you have a shit ton of keychains. Um... I always use angled, a whole bunch of other creators always use angled. It basically keeps it from colliding into itself. Now, let's get into an example of this. So this is Cupcake's Tail. I absolutely love it. 10 out of 10 recommend. Like, seriously, go fucking get it. It's free. Um, so I'm gonna drag this transform in here, right? I'm gonna just fuck around with the settings a little bit, make it a super wiggly tail. I'm gonna turn the limits on angle. Um, depending on how big your thing is, you're going to want a bigger angle. And then, we're going to go into play mode real quick. And I'm going to show you what this does. Um, it works as like a self-collider. So it'll keep... It, it's more realistic, I guess you could say. So we're going to see how it does that. I don't know what the... We're going to ignore what's going on in the back. But see how it works as like a self collider? Oh, I know what's going on. So these self colliders do work against other things. But be fully aware of the fact that it can collide through other things. Like see how with the frog keychain, it's not touching itself or going through itself. Um, it basically is doing the same thing with the tail. Um, this is very useful on tails and hair. Um, I don't suggest putting this on boob bones or breast bones or ass bones because this could possibly make the model look a little bit weird. Um, I'm going to grab a different tailbone for this in hopes of helping with that because <laughs> that looked a little funny. Um, I think it might have actually been because she was in her back. Uh, I guess not. But you can play with this. Um, personally, for tails, I like to have it a little smaller because then it keeps from that butt thing happening. This is way more effective on hair, though. Um, I usually do it on Cupcake's tail because it just it's a curly tail. It's going to be a small thing that matters. Um, colliders, obviously, they work the same way um, as they did with fizz bones. That was a fizz bone. That was not a collider. Uh, colliders work the same way, except for you don't have to scale them down as much. Um, this usually fits perfectly around my um, spine and my chest. Uh, I don't suggest ever putting spine or chest. I usually do just chest, um, but I will put um, some... I will put chest colliders if the hair is long and how my model has these little cute tangly things down here. Um, yeah. Um, most people do left and right shoulder. I usually don't care about it, but today we are going to magically give a shit. Um, I found the best settings for this would be about four and three. Um, it really depends on if you have any hair right here like i do three fits perfectly and will keep it from standing out too far but it will keep it from 
it'll it'll keep it from it, it keeps it from pretty. We'll just we'll just say that. I personally like to go uh, three zeros and then six for quite literally right at the shoulder blade. Um, we're gonna make it a little bigger just to fit around the shoulder blade completely. Um, if you are using Vandenberg's base, feel free to use these exact same settings. They work the same. Um, I specifically, when it comes to my colliders, I have not changed it. Um, especially during the fizz bones dynamic bone thing that happened. I, I completely changed it. Um, you don't need a neck one. I don't know why, but some people do. But you don't need one. Um, I personally like to just put a head collider. I usually just leave this at nine. Actually, yeah, that looks fine right there. Actually. For this, you're gonna want it like kind of like directly in like the center of the face. Um, so, we're gonna get into the hair. real quick like with hair I usually don't do this um, just because it automatically grabs that bone so I don't usually have to worry about it um, for the hair I usually fuck around with a lot um, I usually go somewhere about in this general area um, but again we're gonna add the angles so you'll see they're absolutely humongous you don't want that you're gonna want to like dye these down um, on the bangs, maybe, I would put them up a little bit. Uh, if I can find my bangs. On the bangs, because they are a uh, wider area, I do like to turn them up. But on, like, back hair, I usually like to leave it like that. Um, how I personally love to test is I'll grab this. I'll go into this. And then you shake the shit out of it. Sometimes it's nice to turn off gizmos because then you can see. But this is about the general area that I like to do it. It's bouncy. Goes back in place quickly. Still super wiggly. This is also how you can check your colliders. Um, if you really want to check your colliders. You can do that. And just like that, that's how you do it. Um, for ears and all that, or like say you're like me and you have these little things, just turn the spring up. Yeah, just, just turn the spring up. You'll thank me later. For these, you can put a limit type on them. It just keeps them from colliding. Um, I usually turn my limit type usually down to 30, bet uh, between 30 and 35, depending on what it is. Um, it's really up to personal preference if you want them to collide or not. Just remember, I do believe that the angles do add more. They do unoptimize. I believe that they do unoptimize your model. Um, I know colliders do, and so these are technically kind of a collider. They're like a self collision thing. I'd assume so. I usually don't mess around with anything down here. But just make sure that is animated is off because it does make things a lot more optimized. Um, because fizz bones are optimized. Um, I personally love fizz bones because they are optimized. But yes. Um, for hair, like I said, I usually don't add in the root transform. You can if you'd like. I personally don't. Um, I'm gonna fuck around with the ears. I need to turn my gizmos on. For ears, I'll usually turn these up. So, with these, if you want to, you can put the angles. I don't see them as much of a use on these. 
Um, for these though, I do like to put a collision um, on them. From what I've noticed is that these all do still collide if you don't put a radius. So that is one thing that personally I do enjoy. Uh, so do with that information as you will. I'm so sorry, by the way, that my eyes keep closing. Please ignore that on my model. Um, I have completely given up on viewing without glasses. Until I get contacts, you guys are just going to have to deal with it. I don't usually stream much anymore. I do plan to just make tutorials and make avatars. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Suck it. Um, for elf ears, I do usually like to put a... Uh, I will put the, um, I do want them specifically to only collide with the head. Uh, as you saw, because we already had colliders, it automatically responded to the colliders, which is weird. It's never done that before with me. Um, but say it's not doing that, you'll just come in here, you'll add as many of the colliders as you have, and you'll grab a spine chest forgot i had way more i always forget about the shoulders um and yeah just like that um for sleeves especially um i would suggest turning on this um this is a uh cute turtleneck by uh, Onigiri. I recommend it. It has a lot of really cute textures and it comes with permission um, maps as well. Uh, I personally have this on because it's pink and it says cutie in the back. Also, it looks like a donut. Um, but uh, for tutorial's sake, I'm not going to have this on because I do already have settings that I do like. Um, you can have these as well. <laughs> Um, but if you would like to keep them, they are in my server. Um, so there's that. So I'll just go down to the sleeves, this bone, I gotta go grab my fizz bone settings. <laughs> I'm going to minimize my screen a little bit, so things might get a little funky donkey on your guys' side. Yeah. I'm sorry. So, for some reason, I have these ones on advanced, so these will be at zero. One, five, nine. Zero. And then the gravity is zero point... One one zero seven three, and then um, for these ones, I do have them at an angle. Uh, these are uh, oops, I did not want that as, as a hinge. And then for my nerve butt right there, um, I am actually going to turn these on. Just that way I can test it. Like I said, I usually like to test my my uh, fizz bones, especially when it comes to wiggles. I personally like to test them like this. And just like that, I know that they're wiggly. Look at those ears. Um, so one thing I will tell you, if you are like me and you do and you did add a head collider, it will move the ears down. So if you want to fix that, just take away the uh, ear collider. I weight painted that. That upsets me. I weight painted it. And it's still being a stinky. It's really hard for me to find good elf ears that don't do weird, stinky stuff like that. 
But anyways, so that's just a basic overall tutorial on this one. Um, and like, just like that, your avatar is quite literally fucking done. Congratulations, you did it. Um, you get a sticker. You get a sticker. Because I said so. And you know what? You did so great that you can make a kiss. Mwah. Um, thank you so much for watching and dealing with a 25 minute video of me just doing shit. Um, I hope you guys learned something. Please feel free to join my Discord. I do have tons of other Fizzbun settings in there as well that you can steal. Um, especially for ears and for hair. I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching and have fun.